Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we get started, I want to encourage you to check out my wife's business, Ashira Eclipse which sells a wide variety of different hair clips and hair accessories to meet the different taste and preferences of a wide variety of different women. There are also different sizes to fit uh, different uh, hair sizes. You can uh, go to her uh, store at Lila Rose, L-I-L-L-A-R-O-S-E dot biz slash Ashira, A-S-H-I-R-A, or you can check out her Facebook page at ashira.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby, Murder in the Ring. Mystery is my hobby. Today's story took place here in New York only last week. K.O. Brown, lightweight boxing champion, was defending his title against a virtually unknown contender named Lefty Ross. The inspector and I were lucky enough to get ringside seats. No doubt who that round went to, eh, Bart? Not a question, Inspector. Young Lefty Ross doesn't seem to be doing so well, does he? Well, I said right along the kid wasn't ready to meet K.L. Brown. Yeah, you're right. That fat head manager of his... What's his name? Uh, oh, Niall Sampson, yeah. Uh, knows uh, as much about boxing as I do about flagpole sitting. <laughs> Was flagpole sitting the chief sport when you were a boy, Inspector? Oh. Look, Inspector, there comes Sampson now. Yeah. I suppose he's going to give young Ross some fatherly advice. Probably. You know... If I had Samson's reputation, I'd crawl into a hole and I'd, I'd just pull it in after me. You don't think much of Samson, eh, Inspector? I'll say I don't. Hey, hey, what's going on over there in K.O.'s corner? It looks as though a private fight of its own has started among the spectators. Uh-oh, here comes a policeman. They'll have it settled in no time. Sometime, I'd like to go to a prize fight and see all the fighting done in the ring. <laughs> yes. uh, here we go, Inspector. Round two. Yep. Hey, you want to make a little side bet on who takes it? Right. Ten even says Lefty Ross takes it. Are you kidding? That's a sucker bet. Ten even inspector, take it or leave it. Okay. It's a deal, sucker. That's all right, we'll see. Hey, what's the matter with K.O.? He's laying down on the job. You've got that twisted, inspector. Young Ross is waking up on his feet. Look at that. Oh, I... You tell him, Inspector, he needs all the support he can get. My golly, Samson must have given the kid a shot in the arm or something. Either that or Teo was up late last night. Oh, Joe, look at that boy slow. Yeah. Come on, Lefty, my money's on you. Yikes, what a shot. Teo's driving This is something I never expected to see. You and two-thirds of the crowd, Inspector. Look, Kale's down. He's down. He's down. He's out. Like a light. Get back to your corner, Lefty. Let the referee count. He's counting. He's counting. Don't worry about your dog. Stop coming. Now, there goes Lefty back to his dressing room. Hey, they're certainly putting him out of the ring in a hurry. Well, there isn't going to be any hurry about K.O. leaving. No. He hasn't moved since Lefty hung that right hook on his jaw. Come on, Bart. Let's get out of here. I still can't Wait believe... a minute, Inspector. Oh, all right, all right. Here's your dough. Never mind the dough. Look up there. Ah, uh, where? Oh, so you want me to look at my boy, eh? You got to rub it in, Inspector, eh? Kayo huh? is more than knocked unconscious. Come on, man. Good gosh, you're right. 
Follow me, Bart. Hey, make way there, will you? Pardon me, sir. One side, two guys. Pardon me, please. There. There we are, Bart. Climb up under the rope. Right. That's Doc Stanley bending over K.O. now. Yeah. By the expression on his face, I'd say things weren't so good. Hello. How's the story, Doc? Hello, Mr. Drake. Uh, this is bad. K.O.'s jaw is broken. He's dead. <laughs> If you think you're going to smell a murder out of this one, you're crazy. The fact that Kale's jaw was broken is enough. The fact that Kale's jaw was broken is the reason why I'm suspicious, Inspector. I don't get it. Look, if the kid could... This is Kale's dressing room. Enough... Let's go in. Hmm. Lock. I'll take care of that. Open up. Come on, come on, open the door. They don't seem to hear you, Inspector. No, well, they better hear me. Hey, open his door in the name of the law. Who oh, is that? Well, how do you like that? Who is it they want to know? The police! Open this door out! It's about time. Who the devil... There's he... Lefty in the rubbing table, Inspector. Let's go over. Come on. Yeah. There's Samson with him. One side, Rob. Hello, Denton. What's on your mind? Plenty. What's the matter with the kid? Well, what do you think? A couple of rounds of being slugged by a pug like Kayo. Don't do a kid like Lefty here no good. You mean that Lefty's out? He was out on his feet when we took him from the ring. By the look of those red welts on his body, he took more of a beating than I thought. Oh. Yeah, take it easy, kid. Take it oh. easy. You'll be oh. all right. Is You'll that the right. reason you uh, uh, hurried him out of the ring, Samson? Sure. Don't do no good to let them things get around. So huh? I figured right, eh? The kid wasn't ready to meet K.O. But you shoved him in just the same. He got in a lucky punch and... Take it easy, Flatfoot. You stick to your snooper and I'll stick to my prize fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what the devil reason you've got busting in here anyway? Plenty. Now, Inspector, listen. Inspector, please. Samson, would you mind stepping over here in the corner a minute? Bring along those gloves, Inspector. Yeah. All right, Samson, let's go. Say, what kind of a gag is this? Look, i got to tend to the kid. It'll be just as well if the kid doesn't hear what we have to say for the moment. Okay, okay. What's on your mind? Doc Stanley just finished examining Kale. He's dead. Okay. What do you mean he's dead? He stopped breathing. What do you think we mean? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's it got to do with me? What do you need on me for? K.O. died as a result of a beating he took from your boy, Samson. His jaw was broken. What do you mean beating he took from my boy? That's a laugh. <laughs> it was K.O.'s fight right from the first gong until Lefty got in that lucky punch. Yes, yes, it was. That's what made us think that something might be wrong. Inspector, have you examined those gloves? Yeah. They're okay. Nothing wrong there. Say, look, what is this? What are you examining the gloves for? If you think I had anything to do with this, you're crazy. Lefty couldn't hit anyone hard enough to kill him. Anybody know that? That's just the point, Samson. Lefty couldn't hit K.O. hard enough to kill him. And he couldn't hit hard enough to break K.O.'s jaw. That's why I think that K.O. was murdered. <laughs> Donna. Lefty, you, you didn't win. Yes, I won. I'm the new lightweight champion. Oh, darling. Darling, now we can have... Lefty, what's wrong? That you haven't heard? Haven't I heard what, honey? I've just been sitting here waiting. K.O.'s dead. Dead? Darling, what are you saying? He's dead. He died because... Well, because I hit him too hard. <laughs> Honey, you're joking. How could he die because you hit him too hard? That's ridiculous. They think I had my gloves padded. They think I murdered him. They let me go because they couldn't turn up any evidence, but I can't leave town. The idea. The very idea of thinking that you... They're coming up here to ask me questions. They they think I did it. They think I'm a murderer. They... Oh, darling, don't. Of course you didn't do it. Of course you're not a murderer. I must be. They said K.O. died from blows he received in the ring. He examined my gloves. They thought the gloves had been padded. Look, darling, be reasonable. You couldn't have hit him that hard. And even if you did, it wouldn't be your fault. 
Lefty, your gloves weren't padded. I don't know. I, I don't remember. It's all confused in my mind. Maybe they were padded. Oh, oh there they are now. I, I've got to get out of here. You're doing nothing of the sort. You stay right where you are. This is the silliest thing I ever heard of. Yes? Sorry to intrude, Mrs. Ross. You are Mrs. Ross, aren't you? Yes, I'm Mrs. Ross. If you're the police, Lefty has already told me. I'm Barton told Drake. Me. This is Inspector Noah Denton. Hi. Hello, Lefty. Hello, Mr. Drake. Now, see here, Mr. Drake. It's utterly ridiculous to think that Lefty could have... Yes, yes, that. I know. We don't believe Lefty's capable of delivering a blow hard enough to kill any man any more than you do. But still, you've accused him of murder. Not yet we haven't, lady. It's like this. If K.O. died as a result of the blows he received, the gloves had to be padded. Padded? Yeah. Are you accusing Lefty of padding his gloves? What does Lefty have to say about it? Well, I don't know, Mr. Drake. I, I wouldn't pad them myself, but suppose someone else did. Someone else? That's a hot one. Look, son, don't stand there and tell us you wouldn't know whether or not you were wearing gloves with a hunk of lead in one of them. Well, I, I suppose I'd know. Sure you'd know, and the referee would know when he looked the gloves over. That's now, just the point. The referee would know. Lefty, tell us exactly what happened from the time you left your dressing room until you returned there after the fight. Well, I don't know exactly what... That is, I'm not sure. Everything's so confused. You don't know. <laughs> now, look, son. You don't expect us to believe that. Then why not? Lefty was excited. It was his first big fight. Naturally, he's confused about what happened. You remember the fight, don't you, Lefty? Yes, I remember that. I remember taking a beating in the first round. I remember the roar of the crowd and Samson yelling at me, calling me a coward, telling me to get in there and fight. Then the gong rang, and I remember thinking it would have to be now or never. So you got in there and slugged, eh? Yeah, that's right. Lefty, or I mean K.O., must have worked me over pretty badly. I, I guess I was out of my feet when they took me from the ring. I got in one lucky punch, and, and that was all. Well, I got to admit it was a beautiful sock. Now, me... I don't think you were so confused, Bob. I'm sorry, Inspector. I think he was. Huh? But look, Bob, if he can remember getting in there and Inspector, slugging... Inspector, I'm going to change my opinion about K.O. Brown being murdered. I think his death was accidental. Accidental? Yes. Tell me, Lefty, this was to be your last fight, wasn't it? Well, yes, Mr. Drake. Well, that is, if I lost it, was. Mm -hmm. And you had every intention of losing. I mean, by that, you knew you weren't ready to meet K.O., and you didn't think you had a chance of licking him. That's right. Samson didn't think so either, but he offered me big money to take K.O. on. Look, Lefty and I want to buy a farm. Neither of us have any relatives, except Lefty's brother Mike, who isn't much good. Fighting was the only way Lefty knew of earning enough money before we got too old. You can't blame him. I'm not blaming him, Mrs. Ross. One more question, Lefty. Suppose K.O. hadn't died. Suppose you just knocked him out, thereby making yourself champion. Would you have stuck with Samson? Well, if I got to be champ, I don't suppose I could have let Samson down until after I had at least one more fight. Exactly. Inspector, I think we'd better get down to Niall Samson's gymnasium. We're going to work a little bluff on Mr. Samson that should definitely pay off. <laughs> That's right, still snooping around, Samson. Well, oh, are these two hairy gentlemen your bodyguards? That's it, Drake, my bodyguards. They get paid to see that no harm comes to me. You understand? Yes, yeah, perfectly. Drake, you're smart. All right, boys, relax. Now, uh, what's on your mind, Drake? A little matter of murder, Samson. That's rather a new line for you, isn't it? Let's say it's out of my line entirely, chum. I see. Meaning, of course, that you didn't murder K.O. Brown. I didn't lay a hand on him. And I can prove it. Can you prove that you didn't pad one of the gloves worn by Lefty Ross with a pair of brass knuckles or worse? Ah, that's a laugh. <laughs> I suppose next you're going to tell me I had the referee in my pay. I think you would if you could, Samson. Failing in that, you resorted to the next best thing. You padded the glove yourself. You did it between round one and two. Sure, just walked up, stuck a hunk of iron in a glove with everyone looking on it. No yes? one was looking at you, Samson, because everyone's attention was attracted to the fight among the spectators that started near K.O.'s corner. You're reaching for something that ain't there, Drake. Can I help it if a couple of drunks get to slapping each other around? You helped this one. You paid the drunks to do it. 
Inspector Danton just took them down to headquarters, where I feel reasonably sure he'll persuade them to confess. What? Why, you could Well, now that we've cleared up that point, perhaps you'd like to confess to patting Lefty's glove. Look, Drake, you're too smart for your pants. Why don't you go have a talk with Lefty? Uh Uh-huh. I just came from there. And I suppose he told you that between round one and two, I come up and stashed a slug in his glove. No, I'm sorry to say he didn't. Which blows your theory wide open, don't it? Listen, that kid's on the level. He wouldn't let me pull a fast one like that even if I wanted to. I'm quite aware of that, Samson. That's the reason I'm going to hunt through your desk for a bottle of scopolamine tablets. Are you saying I drugged a kid? That's what I'm saying, Samson. Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. I drugged the kid so he wouldn't know I was loading his glove. But he was still in good enough condition to knock out Kayo. You sound triumphant, Samson. Yeah, triumphant. Yeah, that's a, that's a good word. I think you're a little bit wacky if you expect anybody to believe that crackpot story. Now get out of here. I got things to do. I'm afraid you'll have to postpone the things you have to do, Samson. Keep away from that desk, Drake. Afraid of what I might find, Samson? I'll show you how afraid I am. Boys, lock the door. I wouldn't do it, boys. Inspector Denton will be back here any minute, and he won't be alone. So what if he is? I'm telling you to get out of this office or else. Sorry, Samson. You've been training fighters for years. You ought to understand this. Why, you lousy! Get him, boys! Okay, if that's the way you want it, come on. Oh, you will, will you? Give it to him. Open it! Open the door! Give it to him. Come on, boys, let's get out the back door. What that don't know won't hurt him. Hey, you, get back out of sight. Open up or I'm shooting this lock of lights. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Inspector. I'll let you in. Something, Judas, Bob, look at your face. They did a job on you, eh? Uh, yes, it feels that way, Inspector. Oh, well, what did you let them lock the door for? I uh, was busy at the moment. Well, anyway, the bluff worked. Samson thought sure as heck I was working over some of his boys down at headquarters. I'm afraid our bluff missed fire entirely, Inspector. What do you mean? I heard every word Samson said. The trouble is you didn't see what I saw. You see something special? Very special, Inspector. Just as Samson and his boys reached the rear door, it opened and a man came in. Samson yelled at him to get back out of sight. Well, who was it? Lefty Ross. <laughs> Mugs had done something to your thinking apparatus. That couldn't have been Lefty Ross you saw. Well, possibly you're right about Lefty, Inspector, but there's <laughs> nothing wrong with my thinking apparatus. Who are you calling? Every minute we waste here gives Samson more time to get away, you Samson know. Samson won't go far, Inspector. As soon as he realizes that running away will amount to confession, he'll be back. Hello? Hello, Lefty. This is Drake. Oh, yes, Mr. Drake. Lefty, have you been away from your apartment since Inspector Denton and I were there? Donna and I have been right here all the time. Good. Now, listen carefully. Lefty. I wish I had your faith that that mug Samson would stick around when he knows. That's right, Lefty. Now, if you'll follow those instructions, I think you and Donna will be able to buy your farm. Do you think you can handle it, Lefty? Sure, Mr. Drake. We'll do anything you say. What time do you want Donna and me to leave the apartment? Oh, in about uh, 15 minutes. Inspector Denton and I will have everything under control by then. Okay, Mr. Drake. We'll be there. You can count on us. Fine. Goodbye, Lefty. See you later. Well, Inspector, do you think my plan will work? It'll work as far as we're concerned, but suppose Samson doesn't play ball. He will, Inspector, I'm sure of it. We're giving him an opportunity to destroy evidence that will prove him guilty of murder, and I doubt if he'll fail to bite. Come on. Where are we going? We're going out the front door of the gymnasium and walk down the street as though we were leaving the place for good. You figure that Samson's watching outside for us to do just that, eh? That's exactly what he's doing. As soon as he's sure we're gone, he'll return to his office. After all, he's, he feels reasonably sure that we haven't got a thing on him. Now, if he can destroy certain evidence that is probably hidden around this gym somewhere, he's going to feel pretty smug. Okay, I only hope those kids don't get themselves into a jam. They won't, Inspector. We're going to be on hand to see that they don't. Come along. Lefty, what if Mr. Drake's plan doesn't work? Oh, it'll work, Donna. Drake knows what he's doing. The only chance I have of escaping a murder charge. Oh, uh, Mrs. Sampson's office here. Aren't you going to knock? No, let's surprise her. Hey, what the... Oh, I just kid. And a little woman, too. Well, come right in. Come in. Hello, Niles. I dropped by to tell you I was quitting the ring. Oh, you did? Now, just a minute, kid. 
You ain't walking out on me just when I made you champ, are you? Yes, I am. That fight wasn't on the level, and you know it. You better back that statement up with a few facts, kid. I don't like it. I didn't think you would, Niall, so I got the facts. All the facts I need. Yeah? Such as what? Well, I talked to some people who saw the fight. They said I took quite a beating in the first round. They said it? <laughs> don't you know yourself what you did or not? No, I don't. That's what I wanted to ask you about, Niall. Everyone I talked to said K.O. Lamb basted me all over the place. They said that mostly he went after my face and head. Is that a fact? Yeah. And when I heard that, I began to wonder why I didn't have any marks or bruises on my face at all. Oh, so that's it, huh? Well, now, ain't that a shame? It is just a lucky thing my boys are here. They can just take care of your predicament without no trouble at all. Uh, boys, uh, the kid here figures he ought to have some marks on his face and head to show he's been in a fight. Lefty, look out. They're going to beat you up. Now, now, Mrs. Ross, don't you worry. My boys will give Lefty what he wants, and then we'll all sit down and have a nice little talk about whether or not the kid's going to walk out on Niall Simpson. No, no, leave him alone. Get a calm, boys. He asked for it. Keep away from me, you mugs. I... Get away from him. Sit still, Samson. Bart, go over there and frisk him, will you? Glad to, Inspector. Hey, what is this? What's the idea? In case you're really wondering, Samson, we'll let Lefty's brother Mike give you the details. But why, you... You can't prove a thing by him. Not a thing. What's my brother Mike got to do with this, Mr. Drake? Quite a lot, son. It was Mike who fought K.O. Brown yesterday, not you. But that's impossible. No, no, that's not as impossible as you might think, Mrs. Ross. You see, before the fight, Lefty was given a scopolamine tablet. Scopolamine? What's that? It's a new drug, Lefty. It puts the patient in a semi-conscious state. Some psychiatrists use it as a, hub, a substitute for hypnotism. Well, I can't believe I wasn't actually in that ring. You don't remember the fight? <laughs> you said so yourself. Well, it's all confusing. I'll tell you I... why you can't remember it, Lefty. Samson had a loudspeaker rigged up in your dressing room. You heard the fight, and Samson kept yelling at you to get in there and slug. And someone else kept whacking you with a wet towel, which accounted for the welts on your body. It was your brother who was actually in the ring. He looked enough like you so that no one noticed the difference. And between rounds one and two, Samson came up and patted one of Mike's gloves while everyone's attention was attracted to the fight near K.O.'s corner. Mike had been training for weeks. It wasn't much good, but he had enough stuff to last two rounds, which was all Samson wanted. Yeah, but why? Why did Samson go to all that trouble? The answer to that is obvious, Mrs. Ross. Lefty was going to quit the ring, but Samson knew if he won the championship, he'd feel morally obligated to stick for at least one more bout. And maybe Samson could work the same gag again. Okay, boys, here got me. That's just the way it happened. I should have figured I couldn't get away with it. Huh? What? Did you hear what I heard? The um... guy actually admits it. I uh, know when I'm licked, Danton. I got that box of scopolamine pills in this drawer in case. Watch him, Inspector. There's a gun in that drawer. You bet there is. Take care of Drake, boys. The boys better take care of themselves. Just the for <laughs> Here, Inspector, the Rosses live in that apartment house. I know it. I've been here before. <laughs> That's right. I don't know how Lefty and I can ever thank you two for all you've done That's for That's right, Mrs. Ross. It's the sort of thing that the Inspector and I enjoy. Eh, Inspector? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> we had a heck of a time. Say, uh, uh, look, Bart, uh, I've been figuring... Just a minute, Inspector. Huh? Were you going to say something, Lefty? Well, yes, I was. Well, what if no one had noticed, Mr. Drake? Well, I mean, Samson never let me have much publicity. Do you suppose that he, he was kept trying... you undercover on purpose? Yes, I do. The fewer times your picture appears, the less likelihood of anyone recognizing Mike when he stepped into the ring. Oh, I guess you're right. Mike and I look almost exactly alike. Did you know it wasn't me in the ring, Mr. Drake? No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Oh, then how did you guess? What, what gave you the idea that something was wrong? It was your name, Lefty. My name? Of course. You got your name for being left-handed, didn't you? Yes, I did, but... K.O. Brown was knocked out by two rights to the heart and a right hook to the jaw. That's it. That's what I was trying to figure out. But hand me over ten bucks. Ten bucks, Inspector? Sure, you bet me ten even on that second round. I don't understand, Inspector. I bet you ten even that Lefty would take the second round, remember? Well, sure I remember. But Lefty didn't take it. It was his brother Mike who took it. You proved it yourself. Now, give me my ten uh, bucks. Oh, uh, 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 you old... All right, you got me, Inspector. <laughs> I stuck my chin out on that one. Yeah. Thanks. 
Glad I happened to think of that. Uh, by the way, Bart, uh, there's a fight at the gardens next week. So? Now, look, I'll bet you 15 uh, bucks. No, you that, don't, huh? Inspector. Not a chance. From now on, I'm betting on only one thing, huh? and that is... Mystery is my hobby. <laughs> Welcome back. I appreciated that they used the similar looking brother idea rather than the identical twin trope, which is far less believable, but gets used way more often. At any rate, we turn to listener comments and feedback, and uh, we have this from Stephen uh, regarding a uh, review I read from the Apple Podcast for. Stephen wrote, in response to the reviewer who complained about your commentary, when I listen to old-time radio on other podcasts or on uh, old-time radio streamer, I often wonder what Adam would say about this or that and wish for your comments at the end. When you started, your commentary tended to be too long, but for many years now, I've enjoyed it. And the fact that someone asked whether you survived the earthquake shows the community that has grown around your podcast. I appreciate you read your listeners' comments, and sometimes uh, there even uh, is uh, continuing uh, conversations. A new listener wouldn't understand that camaraderie. That was a very good point, Stephen. And uh, I definitely appreciate it, uh, even when I'm listening to other programs. I'll even find myself listening it to non-public domain stuff and thinking, you know, what about what I'll say? And then I realize I'm not actually going to be podcasting this, so I'm not going to say anything about it, uh, which is disappointing because I love sharing programs that I enjoy. And so I, uh, uh, again, appreciate your comments. And then... Steve went ahead and gave us a recommendation on Facebook, said uh, just discovered and downloaded the app. Always a fan of old time radio, being lucky enough to listen to some of the later shows still broadcast when I was a kid. Nice selections of shows, many based on characters from films and novels. Then we have a couple of reviews in the Apple podcast store. Uh, First, we have this from uh, Brother uh, McLaughlin. Uh, I started listening in 2017. I'm hooked on these podcasts, even the ones that other people complain about. I find so cool. I get taken back to another time and place. Adam gives great commentary. I sure love the Boise area and almost moved there a few years ago, Caldwell to be exact. I have a good friend that pastors there. Keep up the uh, great work. Well, thanks so much for your uh, comments and... Uh, then I also have this from Ann. Box 13 uh, does a wonderful job of researching and posting all these great old radio shows. Uh, would love to have him add the zero hour into his mix. I've learned much about my parents' generation born in the late uh, 20s as the advertising as original to the shows. We are a fly on the wall of the homes of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. A great way to connect with the greatest generation. Uh, now so many of them are gone. Well, thanks so much, and uh, I definitely agree about that uh, connection uh, portion. It really just does provide some great perspective. Uh, As to Zero Hour, uh, that was uh, produced uh, by Rod Serling after uh, 1972. I think it was 73, but anything after February 15th of 1972, anything that was broadcast, is covered by uh, copyright law. Now, Actually, there are certain episodes, if they aired without copyright notices, uh, that uh, could still be in the public domain prior to January of 1978. However, that is such a rabbit hole, yeah, and uh, beyond anything we would do here. So, no reflection on the quality, but uh, it's uh, under copyright as far as I can tell, and so I will just leave that alone, but I appreciate the suggestion. Now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much to Lisa. Lisa's been one of our Patreon supporters since January 2019, currently supporting us at the uh, Master Detective level of $15 or more uh, per month. Thanks so much for your support. 
That will do it for now. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and we will be back next Thursday, another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.